This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready get 30, ready get 20, 20, 20, ready get 20, 20, ready get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic expert guest for you today, Zami Mutak. She's an online marketing expert and she helps business owners, entrepreneurs grow and scale their online businesses, get clients online. And I'm really happy to have her on the show. Zami, welcome. Thanks, Chris. Excited to be here. Yeah, I know you, we had connected. And so for the audience, I love hearing your story, how you got started and how you can serve the audience. Yeah, absolutely. So you said it really well. I'm a online marketing strategist and I primarily help coaches, consultants, therapists, and practitioners launch and scale their online business. So a lot of social media marketing, all that really good stuff. But yeah, a little bit of background about me. When I first started, I did a bit of corporate, was in banking, worked at Royal Bank of Canada for five years, actually, and uh, realized marketing was a thing that I actually really enjoyed. I loved working with entrepreneurs. I used to host in-person retreats pre-COVID as well. I ventured into a couple of different projects and things like that. And I realized this is what I enjoy. This is what I love. And then COVID happened and, and the online space just went crazy. So that was like my opportunity to be like, okay, let's really make the most of this. And I'm so happy I couldn't be doing anything else right now. Yeah. I think I launched my podcast during COVID and went all in. I never figured I never knew when the world would open back up. And by the time it did, it was like thriving. It's really interesting. So you have a Thrive Pillars framework that you help and elaborate on this and how you develop the system and why is it effective? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, in the coaching space, there's a lot of information and there's so many coaches and so many ways to market your business. And so I personally have been mentored by so many mentors in the last couple of years, joined tons of masterminds, spent after all of the testing and trial, what I really came to learn is that it comes down to a couple of things, which is three things, which are the main pillars. So the main thrive pillars that I have is attract, nurture, convert, which is A and C. So just to break it down, attract is first of all, you really want to understand who is your audience? Who are you serving? What is the problem that you're solving? And where are they actually hanging out? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Instagram? Are they on Facebook? And that's really the foundation of it. And then nurture is once you have that audience, once you have people coming in, how do you take them from like somebody who is just knows you as the average Joe or Sue to somebody who actually likes you, trusts you and will buy from you? So that's the nurture process that I really leverage. And in that we leverage Facebook communities, Facebook groups, and it's all about relationship building. And then the last part is convert, which is all about sales, but more on a heart-centered sales approach. I know there's a lot of spammy, icky, salesy stuff out there. And especially for coaches who are heart-centered, they want something that's more authentic. And so my approach with convert is a heart-centered sales approach that actually gets your client understanding the value of what you're offering them and having them solve that problem. So yeah. That's interesting on that is when one thing is uh, talking about is communities and we have mentioned uh, Facebook com- communities and now these days, if you see what happened with TikTok and how can entrepreneurs um, build a solid business where their communities won't get pulled out from them, their followings, all of these, what other types of ways to leverage communities that in addition to Facebook groups? Yeah, Absolutely. We have multiple like ways, right? So we have the Facebook groups is one thing. And then we have, you want to nurture your email list. 
There's other platforms as well, like school now that are really big. So it's really making sure that. So yeah, it's all about leveraging communities and uh, looking at like where, what is best for your audience, right? So emails are really great. Facebook groups are really great. School is also really great. And then having multiple platforms as well, whether it's social media or outside of social media, partnerships is something that's really big as well right now, you know, leveraging other people's audiences and growing off of that. So we want to make sure that we're not putting all our eggs in one basket and mm -hmm. looking wide. I also check out that um, community school you did. SKL. SKL. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely pick that out. And then moving forward, we talk about identifying ideal clients and it's almost counterintuitive because you talk about clients, but how can entrepreneurs get clear on who they serve and create a unique offer? What are common mistakes? That really is a foundation of it. First things first is you want to understand what is a problem that you're solving. Entrepreneurs come in with so many different passions and so many different experiences and they're like, Oh, I want to help this people and I want to help this and I can do this. But then we really look at, okay, let's look at what are your passions? What are your experiences? What are your certifications and your qualifications? And then what does the market really want? What are the problems that you can solve in the market that people are actually looking to solve? And we'll actually pay you to solve it because we want to make sure it's profitable as well. So that's really the first part is identifying the niche and helping them clar get clarity on that. And then once we have that clear and we know it's not just a, a nice to have problem, but it's actually, I need to solve this now, then we go into like, how do you actually solve it? And so that we go into the offer and we look at what is a unique mechanism or framework that you can create based on your experience, your qualification, your certifications, and how is that method or framework different from anybody else offering something similar? So that's the offer and then the niche. Yeah. You know, what's, how do you reconcile this um, thing? Because uh, you think about growing and scaling a, a business and getting clients and like you, you alluded to, you're like, yeah, everybody uh, wants to grow, like everybody and they get scattered, but then, you know, so it's counterintuitive, like you just focus down on one single thing and, they, and their business explodes. How do you reconcile that? Yeah. So it, by reconcile, do you mean like, how do we get to that? It's basically, it's counterintuitive because it's like, you want to, if you basically you do, you get more success by focusing on a single client versus serving like multiple, just going in different directions. I was just curious, like for the people that are interested in growing an online, how do they, how do you stay focused and just stay in your lane? Cause you see these people with a million followers and you're like, yeah, I'll never be like that. Or I want to be like that. And how do you reconcile that? So you have to understand like somebody who has a million followers, they could be an influencer, right? And so that's a totally different business model. They're going off of brand sponsorships and partnerships, and that's a whole different way of a business model on its own. And so it's not, that's not really like they can offer a service, but then they have a massive audience and it's wide and, and large. But if you are a coach, a consultant, and you have a specific service, then the riches are in the niches and you want to make sure you target a specific client because then your content is going to speak to them. If you're talking to everybody, then how do you even create content? It's not going to speak to anyone, right? And that's where the marketing comes into place. So it's making sure you understand the influencers who have millions of followers. That's a different model from what we're doing as coaches. Yeah. And Speaking of content, what strategies do you recommend for creating content that goes viral and attracts ideal clients and share some success stories or examples? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to content, every platform is different. So with Instagram, they're really big on the reels and the short form content. And for that, you want to make sure it's attention grabbing within the first second, you have a hook that captivates your audience. You want to incorporate some entertainment there and you'll see a lot of the dancing TikToks and the audios that they incorporate and things like those. There's lots of things that can make the video go viral. You have to variables, you have to play around with to find what works. And then it's a lot of volume for that type of content and really being able to make sure that you are able to produce that volume to see what works kind of thing. Very different from Facebook. 
uh, with Facebook, it's more targeted. So especially in the communities, there are communities out there that have your odd ideal audience. So if you're serving entrepreneurs, for example, the, the communities that have specifically entrepreneurs, and some of them allow you to even promote your stuff in there, you can literally go and do a post where you can promote your freebie or your lead magnet. That can be a piece of content that attracts your ideal audience in from like a massive community where you're piggybacking off a different community. So just to give you an idea, different strategies for content, depending on the platform that you're leveraging, will be very different. I really love how you talked about the different strategies and the different features of the platforms. Um, as a follow-up question, you know, earlier on, you talked about authentic sales techniques because I get so many just kind of spam um, in my LinkedIn feed. Discuss the art of heart center, feminine sales. How can entrepreneurs overcome the resistance to charging for their services without feeling fails? Yeah, absolutely. So there is definitely strategy that goes into that, but a huge part is also mindset, right? It's understanding like, why is your offer worth the amount you're charging for? It's shifting the mindset from an hourly rate to a package that's 3K, 5 grand or 10 grand. So there's a lot of mindset shift in there. And it's understanding that if that person continues on the path, your ideal client, if they continues on the path that they are at right now, they will continue to struggle, right? So it's not about us. It's not about you trying to be salesy or anything. It's about solving real problems here. And if you truly want to create impact as a coach, especially you say you want to create impact, then you got to understand this is where the impact comes into play. So there's a lot of mindset shifts around that, incorporating the feminine sales aspect of it. It's not pushy. It's not icky. It's very permission-based. It's holding space. It's allowing the client or the prospect to come to the conclusion themselves of why they need this and why this is the best decision for them versus us trying to convince them or persuade them. So, Yeah. You, you mentioned something that was really interesting. I've heard this term a lot. You talk about holding space for the client intuitively I get the sense of what that means and expand on that. Like what does holding space look like and feel like so people can incorporate this into their um, day-to-day sales operations? Absolutely. Sometimes be like if the client or the prospect is feeling really pressured on the call is really just being able to create a safe space where they're able to release that pressure and feel calmer and feel safer, even just by saying, for example, we can move forward with this offer today, but you let me know where would you like to go from here? So immediately you're releasing that pressure on yourself or the client. You're letting them say, hey, yes, I do want to move forward or hey, I don't. And that's totally okay. So there's an aspect of being detached over there as well, of really making sure that you create that safe space and you truly hold the space for that person to make the best decision for themselves. Yeah, because if they feel pressure, they're not going to make a really good uh, decision. Um, question I have for the owners is that how can they create a predictable client generating system without feeling overwhelmed by the other things like marketing, social media, sales, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. So predictability comes into A, knowing your numbers. So for example, if you have an income goal of let's say 10K per month, right? And your offer is let's say 2K or 3K, then you only need three clients per month to hit your 10K month. And then you can look back into, okay, then how many calls do I need to be getting on? For example, if your closing rate is 30% to start out or 25%, you're looking at getting on nine calls per month, for example. And then you really look down into, okay, then how many people do you need to be speaking to? How many people do you need to be having conversations with? How many people do you need to be building relationships with? And what does that look like? And so then we go back and really reverse engineer to look at, okay, how can you generate more conversation? How can you have more people in your audience so that you can speak to, that you can invite to calls? Once we have that metric in place and the KPIs, and we know how we're attracting the audience and how we're bringing people in and how we're nurturing them, then it's literally a matter of rinse and repeat and tweak and optimize to make it something that's truly predictable. Yeah, you know, so I, I like this hey, Kendall's idea of reverse engineering. And one thing that came to my mind when you were talking was to get a certain number of people 
to sign up, to get on the call. What happens if entrepreneurs are like, now I got to go to conference or meetups, networking events. How do entrepreneurs maintain well-being without burning out and running in all these different directions just to get those people on those calls? Absolutely. So with what I teach, we don't do any of the in-person stuff. It's purely online. So you don't need to be going to conferences to look at people or networking events. They're great if you want to go for the experience, but that's not the main lead generation method. It's primarily online. So it's using the communities that are already there. It's positioning yourself as an expert online. Like your Facebook profile will be your business card. It will be even more important than your website because that's the first place somebody's going to come, right? And having your own content online, if you have a masterclass or live video trainings or your own Facebook group, that's the room that you're going to bring people into. It's all online. And so it's really being able to leverage that and not being scattered into like, I need to do a million things at the same time. No, that's the biggest way to burn out fast. So. Yeah. It's very focused and targeted and, and actually online things like, you know, you can, you know, YouTube and podcasting, these things can take up more, but they're more efficient because you can basically, they say that podcasting is like the modern day book tour. So you don't have to, in a lot of conferences, they stream it on YouTube now. So the, I know we have around seven minutes remaining and we talked about engaging an audience. What are effective methods for turning core leads into warm leads? as well as uh, building an engaged raving fan audience. Absolutely. Raving fan audience is all about content. And uh, yeah, when it comes to content, we really look at different ways to do this. Absolutely. You have your typical posts that go out and really being able to, there's a lot of copywriting that comes into place. How do you write copy that when your audience sees that or, or like reads that they're like, oh my God, you're talking to me. You're talking to me on a soul level. I feel triggered sometimes, right? Yeah. It's a good thing you've got your ideal audience. So it's really being able to master the art of copywriting, first of all, for content creation. And then it's being able to leverage multiple ways for nurturing the audience. So that could be having your own community. It could be in a Facebook group where you can host virtual events, for example, that could be on Zoom. It could be hosting master classes or specific live trainings on specific topics. It could be doing workshops or three day or five day live challenges, which is something that I do almost a month is a five day live challenge. Like what better way than your audience to come watch you every single day live for an hour from Monday to Friday, like your voice is going to be ringing in their head, right? And so that's how deep we can go with the nurture process. So that by the time your prospect gets on a call with you, they're pretty much sold, right? Because you've delivered so much upfront value so that they see the value in what it would be like to actually work with you and why you're the person that can help them solve that problem. Fascinating. How can people reach out to you and find you on socials and check out your Facebook group and uh, work with you? Yeah, absolutely. So the best way to reach out to me will be Facebook. So Zami Mustak, my username, you can search it up. And then from there, yeah, you can pick where you want to go. I have a free Facebook group. I have live challenges that I host and yeah, reach out to me. Yeah, I love that. And what a fantastic conversation. And for the, all, the, all the audience, be sure to check out Zami's socials, give her a like and follow. I think she's got a lot of good knowledge and experience to help clients build an online business and Thanks so much for coming on. Oh, yeah. Actually, I have a challenge coming up. So if your audience wants to participate, then the place to go would be getclientswithzami.com forward slash challenge. I also have a free client attraction guide. So to get that, you can just go to getclientswithzami.com forward slash guide. Thank you so much. This was fun. Yeah. And these those links to the challenge will be in the show notes.